Glory to Jesus Christ. And to ages of ages. And glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, Apostle Paul tells us what kind of weaponry as Christians we should have. Not, not swords, nor shields, nor helmets for war or for battle, but spiritual armament, armaments of peace, armaments that show forth faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and that clothe us round about with righteousness, justice, with mercy, with compassion, all these weapons that we should gird ourselves with as Christians. And get in the gospel reading today. It's a very almost peculiar saying, almost strange. Surely many wealthy people are deeply pious and loving, and surely many wealthy people can also enter into the heavenly kingdom. And yet, it is difficulty for the very rich to enter into the heavenly kingdom. Wealth equals power, and power equals ego, self-love, self-centeredness so often. So what really is our Lord Jesus Christ saying? That money can be a form of bondage. It can be a kind of prison. We know very wealthy people who hoard their money and don't use it for anything because their money is their first love. But it's not just wealth or money. It's all kinds of things can become this kind of bondage to us. And there are things which ultimately we have to give up in order to find an authentic or real life. So often the things that we possess, the things that occupy our mind, the things that occupy our time, are things that really do hold us in a kind of bondage and keep us from living a real life. Sometimes it's social pressure. Sometimes it's belonging to a, a given group of people, a given association, and we value that so highly that we close ourselves off from others. And so our Lord Jesus Christ is not simply talking about wealth in terms of money, but anything that really grabs hold of us and holds us in some kind of prison. It could be the opinions of others. We could be worried so much about what other people think about us that we give no thought to what our relationship is with our Lord Jesus Christ, only what our relationship is with these other people that we desire to have their respect and their esteem. But sometimes you can buy the respect and esteem of certain people by doing very evil things. Even drug dealers want the respect and esteem of their fellow drug dealers. So it's not about trying to find any form of power or even seeking out the respect and esteem of a given group of people, but having our heart open to all humanity, to everyone. And we're thinking first and foremost, what is my relationship with Christ Jesus, my Savior. And remember we've said before that the only way you can really measure your relationship with Christ is to measure your relationship with other human beings, not some particular group of human beings, but of all human beings that you come into contact with. <coughs> so often I find among our people someone who's been in this country for 30 years and still does not speak English because they associate only with other Serbian people or with other Russian people. Even my godfather was in this country for more than 30 years and never learned to speak English because there were many Russians and Ukrainians around and he didn't seek out English speaking people to relate to. So all kinds of things and not just money can prevent us from entering into the heavenly kingdom. And taking the example of this rich young ruler, he fulfilled all the law. 
he was very careful and very diligent because he was pious. So he tried to fulfill the commandment to the letter. But he still had a roadblock where he could not enter into the kingdom of God. And it was because his money was more precious to him than anything else. That it was the one thing that focused him and the one thing that he loved even above everlasting life. And that's where the problem is formed. When we become so attached to things that we cannot think about other people and we cannot think about our relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's not condemning wealth and not condemning money, but condemning the bondage into which it can place us. The same the Apostle Paul today, saying the faith of Jesus Christ cannot be spread with a physical sword. We do not need a shield to go into battle. We do not need a war, a military helmet to fight any fights. But we need rather the weapons of peace, the sign of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we say in the Tropari and the Kondakim for the, for the cross, the weapon of peace. We need to have that shield of faith. And when the priest puts on vestments to serve the divine liturgy, it's a, a type of a shield of the grace of the Holy Spirit that allows us to stand before the holy table and to serve. But we need all of us to have that shield of faith that protects us and shields us from the temptations of doubt and the temptations that come along in this life to give ourselves over to a worldly way of living and to abandon the faith itself. The faith, the shield of faith, but there's something more than that. Because the greatest weapon we have against Satan, believe me, it's unselfish love. That is what can truly defeat the power of Satan. The very thing that Satan hates and is opposed to the most is unselfish love. He traps us through our ego. He traps us through our self-concern. It's so easy to ignore other people simply because we're looking after our own self-interest and care nothing about the condition of others. So the real shields, the real sword, the real helmet that we can place on us to defeat Satan. It's trying and striving to grow in unselfish love. And I believe that everyone here experiences that and strives toward it here in this temple and in the agape afterward. That there's no contention, there's no argument, there's no strife, there's no anger amongst our people. And this is the first step toward defeating the power of Satan. For any time Satan enters in to the life of a church, you can always see it. There will be a parish council meeting where people argue and fight. There will be different parties forming within the community. There will be gossip of one, against one person. There will be some who form a little clique here and others who form a little clique there and they're divided against each other. And this is all the work of Satan. And if we do not struggle against it, if we have not put on the proper shield and taken up the proper sword, we all can fall victim to that. Every community can fall victim to it. So above all, brothers and sisters, if we wish to understand fully the Gospel reading for today and exactly what Apostle Paul is saying to us today, be very diligent within our community that we have harmony and peace and unselfish love, that no one is demanding their own at the expense of another, and that we know and respect and have a, a feeling of warmth and love toward one another. And in this way we have that peace that passes all understanding within the community itself. It's something that has constantly to be worked on. We've all seen Orthodox communities 
in which there's strife, in which there's anger, in which there's bitterness, in which there are fights, in which there are arguments going on, in which one group is demanding its own will over the, the welfare of the whole community. And those things are truly the working of Satan. And to our community, I say, and to every community and everyone who will watch the video of this sermon, you have to work diligently at growing an unselfish love, at saying, I do not demand my will over the desires of other people in this community because I want to see the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see the peace of the cross in this community. It is better for me to yield my will and my desire to someone else than to be a source of strife and a source of unpeacefulness in every community. And if we can diligently work at that and grow and develop in that, not only can we defeat Satan in the community, we can defeat Satan a little in the whole world because he's been defeated in our community. And in this we can preach the gospel because we live the gospel and because we seek the gospel above our own will, above our own passions, above our own desires. Brothers and sisters, let us seek the peace that passes all understanding within our own hearts and amongst the brothers and sisters who we call Orthodox Christians. Amen. Amen.